created to entertain, educate, and evolve the modern day deer hunter. Yeah. Alright, there we go. Now we're up and running. So, quick couple, couple quick things uh, before we get to our pre-recorded episode here uh, i was going to start this off today with uh just looking for a little bit of input on boots what uh i'm having a little bit of an issue being between like a rubber and uh a traditional style boot and uh i'm thinking about going towards maybe like a mountain uh you know style like a nicer gore-tex hiking boot and a gator um but I just got some new rubber boots that I'm trying out, and uh, these guys sent these to me to basically get some feedback from because they're trying to make an attempt at breaking into the U.S. Uh, marketplace for hunting boots. So they make a real rubber boot, and they're manufactured somewhere in Europe. <clears throat> I'm looking up the information right now. Uh, I just got these. And first impression of them is that they are quite a bit different than traditional rubber hunting boots that I've been wearing. They're substantially lighter and more nimble. Um, they are come with a heavy price tag, and I'm sure that they'll find uh, their market. <clears throat> or they might have to adjust a little bit. But the increase in in uh, price you can see it when you uh, look at them you see how they're tailored um, they're made out of uh, natural rubber not vulcanized rubber which makes them uh, I guess a completely different animal but uh, I found them to be extremely comfortable I just got them I've been wearing them for about a week now I'm pretty impressed I'll tell you exactly which ones I have you can go online take a look at them they're 330 bucks, so they're about twice the cost of, I think, the last set of Alpha Burleys that I bought. I paid 130 They were like a year old. Um, these are $200 more than that, but they're, uh, they're a different boot. You'd have to see them. I don't know if these guys are going to have places where you can get your hands on them and try them on, or if they're going to do all online sales or what, but... Um, I'll have a definitely a more in-depth review on them after I uh, put some miles on them. But first impression is um, they're extremely well crafted, ex- very uh, like very rigid, durable construction, and uh, they just fit different. Um, and they're they must be half the weight of uh, some of the boots that I have been wearing. So super interesting. Um, my wife got a set too and we're gonna put these things through the ringer but i'm having uh issues with work boots like i need a set of good boots um and i was trying to think of if there would be something that i could work in all day like a kind of a work boot tennis shoe hunting boot hybrid because my set of work boots that i buy is 230 bucks and it looks like you're gonna pay north of 200 for a good set of hiking boots so you're getting to like 450 dollars in boots that's pretty excessive uh so i don't know how you manage all that and get what you need but that's the current situation that i'm in and if anybody wanted to go to the facebook uh thread start a thread on it and uh i don't know talk about if anybody knows a real comfortable pair of boots that are like 
multi-purpose and versatile like durable enough to go do plumbing and electrical and trades work in but you know comfortable enough to not be the traditional leather boot um i've worn red wings irish setters danners um carolinas uh, quite a few of, of those and uh you know leather boots just have their obviously way more durable great boots love them but uh it'd be nice to have something a little bit lighter and that breathes better especially this time of year man it's just it's rough so uh any of that feedback send it to the facebook uh group and uh i don't know i need to do something here pretty soon because i'm sick of having cold wet feet and I need to do a boot upgrade, and I want to be strategic on it. So I'm open for input. Uh, that being said, um, one other quick thing is that I need a, a huge favor from all you guys um, to go to the Backcountry Film Fest page and vote for our, our film trailer. Uh, I'd be greatly appreciative if you guys did that. Um, there's quite a few in there. Uh, we have currently like 10 votes, but one has, oh, I think, 95 or 100 the last time I looked. So um, all the other ones don't really have that many votes. Um, so obviously those guys were able to drive some traffic to that page and get some votes and their film suite. I would suggest clicking on it and looking at it. But for God's sake, I don't ask that much of you. Please don't vote for theirs and uh, vote for ours. And... I don't know. Uh, it would be sweet to get a bunch of, of votes uh, from whitetail guys and followers of the show so that, you know, when, I don't know, whoever's looking at those films that are potentially going to get entered in the BHA Film Fest that, you know, there's a good whitetail one in there, some Midwest uh, and just deer hunting representation in general. I mean, we got deer hunters that listen to the show in Europe, Canada, Mexico, uh Texas, all the way up to, you know, New York, Maine, all over the country. Uh, it's pretty crazy. I can track the downloads. Um, so it would be sweet if uh, any and all of you would be willing to go to, I'll tell you exactly what the, the page is. And then what I'll do is I will link in the show notes, I will link the um, direct link. And you just go there. It is Public Landowner Film Fest. So if you just Google that, <clears throat> the page will come up. You scroll down to the bottom, almost all the way to the bottom. Uh, maybe it's different on a computer, but I'm on an iPhone looking at it, and you have to go down a substantial way. And there's a, a little blue box, and it says enter or vote. You click on vote, and a thumbnail page of the films pops up. And if you go down towards the bottom... There's uh, our two trailers, and then, uh, like I said, there's one film I watched it. I was like, damn, these guys got 100 votes. Like, most of the other ones have two, four, six. We have nine. You know, we're doing decent there, but then you look at these other guys, and they got 95. I'm like, holy shit, we got to catch up to these guys. Like, I need a little bit of help on this. So, please, man, uh, be super grateful for anybody that would be willing to do that. And, uh, yeah, we'll keep you updated. Um the Patreon guys, huge thanks to you. Uh, huge thanks to everybody that's been writing in all the nice stuff about us keeping the show real, man. That's like such good motivation to know that we're doing things right and different and going in the right direction. Like uh, I'm humbled by it, man. It's awesome. We're building like a cool organic following, something a little bit different. Um, and uh, to get your guys' support is just, just fucking stellar. So... <sighs> trying to swear less on this but uh <clears throat> didn't do great right there anyways um so huge favor please do that um if there's anything else the patreon guys i think you saw uh, hopefully you got a notification an email that we put a link in there so you guys could watch the film um felt it was the absolute least we could do for uh you guys you know helping us keep this thing going in the right direction and we haven't been able to provide a lot of additional content to put into that page because that's kind of the essentials of a patreon is to you know those those people fund for you know the content and the media and god we've always you know we obviously 
don't do this full time and it's hard for us to get anything done but it was nice to be able to have that little additional thing and be able to post something up on there and just say thanks to all you guys that have been helping along the way and messaging every week and come out to events man it's like it's just awesome um life-changing thing um super grateful for it uh, just crazy crazy times uh right now moving forward with this whole ordeal so uh i've been a little lackadaisical here the last couple of weeks man i'm just seriously coming back to ground zero from that whole uh you know finale to the end for the premiere of the film and uh i've been on the phone with a couple guys we got a couple good podcast guests lined up i think this week uh here in the next couple days uh i'm going to talk with jason campbell uh he was on before he's been requested a handful of times to have been back on the show and him and i have been talking about doing it for quite a while and then uh i ran into jason at the um expo in grand rapids last weekend and then him and his uh, daughter and some of their friends and family uh were nice enough to come out to the film premiere and him and i finally got a chance to catch up this week and we're going to do a spring scouting uh podcast like a start to finish spring scouting jason um phenomenal deer hunter um public land do it yourself for type of dude and kills big deer where people don't kill big deer um and he does it consistently so he got my attention a while ago he's been on here before he's a super sharp guy uh and it's gonna be a fun conversation and uh that'll be up as uh, long as everything goes goes correctly uh that'll be up next week um so this one's coming a day late <clears throat> like i said things have been a little chaotic if you guys do anything ever for me, go vote for this uh, film trailer. Like I said, I will have the direct link. So if you're listening to this podcast, you can scroll down. There should be a direct link. Um, I'm pretty sure most of you guys know how links work. There could potentially be some guys listening to this that don't. It's like a it's like a deer trail on the internet, man. Like you can follow it to good places. So, you know, there's a lot of old timer deer hunters that are starting to get savvy about these podcasts and and tune into them and it's funny now that like a couple of years ago those that older generation when i talked to them a little bit it was what's well, podcast what podcast and now they like at least the hunters um and they know what they all are and they listen to them um and we had uh a nice showing of i would say older deer hunters that came out to the film that we had the opportunity to talk to and uh it was awesome um i made sure that i like stepped back and would just try to slow time a little bit while i was talking to those guys and enjoying that whole thing coming out like just a crazy crazy thing i know we talked about it on the last couple of podcasts but still uh like emotional about it after all these weeks and uh it was it was just cool to see an older generation of deer hunters come out and for us guys to be able to communicate with them um i'm excited about the direction that this thing's going in so um go vote please and thank you I hope your week goes great. Uh, this podcast I recorded here last week with my friend Allie Jutin. Um, she is a freelance journalist, uh, a female, young female hunter that lives in northern Minnesota uh, on a cattle farm. And her husband's in the trades, and her and him are pretty into deer hunting, and she's kind of an interesting person that I met via social media here a couple years back. And uh, I've been interested for quite a while to have a conversation with her, and we did so this week. So enjoy that podcast, and thanks for all the support. Right. About deer hunting. I know. I wish that I could have a beer. Right. I went on that ice, ice fishing trip last weekend with, uh, like, 20 other women. And, of course, when you ice fish, you have to drink, right? Well, you don't have to, but it's, like, part of it, right? Yeah, it makes the so, but, ice fishing experience a lot more enjoyable. <laughs> right? Well, and it was fun. I had a lot of good, a lot of good times, but I was the sober one the whole time. So, that was all right. But it, had, it, was, it was a good experience overall. That's no a, beer. Yeah, that's a whole different social. Uh, that's a perfect way to start this out. That's a whole different social 
uh, experiment that you're going to be doing here for, when did you say you're due? Uh, June, June 9th. So I'm, you know, 22 weeks or whatever. Okay. Yeah. So you're going to have a long stint of being sober and probably (laughs) being around people that aren't. And, uh, boy, oh boy, it's interesting to, uh, it's interesting to witness as I'm sure you're already seeing, right? Yep. I mean, I'm not someone who needs alcohol to have fun, but you know, having a beer while you're ice fishing, that's like, that's the norm, you know, and it's, it does make it more enjoyable. So, uh, yeah, it'll be, it'll be interesting to say the least. Yeah. It definitely makes being around a group of people that are drinking, um, tolerable. (laughs) Uh, I myself also like, uh, I don't have like an alcohol dependency, but in social situations, uh, it can definitely help ease some tension. And then there is no question if you are around a group of people that are drinking, um, it, it makes it much more palatable. Yeah. You know, we went to, I was talking about that ice fishing trip and we went to a bar after we were off the ice and uh, I actually got a bush light non-NA, you know, the non-alcoholic <laughs> one. And, yeah. And the bartender also gave me three pickles. So that was pretty nice. Nice. <laughs> um, but so it was just like the act of holding a beer and it tasting like beer, you know, it yeah. was kind of like, huh, this is, you know, I'm at a bar and I'm like, cheers everyone. Like, yeah. Right on. <laughs> Drinking at a bar. Uh, but the, the flip side to that is some people took videos and stuff and oh, I had to like, uh, like they tagged me in them. So I, sh- I shared one of them and I had to clarify like, dude, I'm not, I'm not drinking. Right. This is not, not alcoholic. Cause I know that somebody would be like, Hey, what are you doing? You know, no kidding. Social media. Why don't you go ahead and do a quick introduction of yourself? Uh, there'll be a lot of guys that are listening to this that may not ho- know who you are. Um, we've been friends for a while now and why don't you go ahead and tell them who you are and kind of why you do spend a lot of time on social media. Yeah, sure. So, um, obviously my name's Allie Jutine and, uh, I live in Northern Minnesota. So, um, probably, Uh, 30 minutes north of Duluth or so and I live on my family or my husband's family farm actually it's a beef cattle farm and um, I spent a lot of time outside and I started sharing a lot of my like outdoor adventures probably I don't know four years ago now and just kind of like a lot of things happened that I just started sharing more and more about my outdoor adventures and then I started getting some people following me and um, it kind of transpired into the way that I wanted to you know format my career so I I kind of shifted careers about a year and a half ago to kind of focus more on the outdoors so yeah that's that's part of part of me I guess What, Um, what were you doing prior to that so my background, like my degrees in journalism and international studies. So I worked for a short time in like traditional media and radio actually Mm -hmm. and reporting. And, um, then I took a job. Well, that was like an eight, $9 an hour job at the time. And I was like, I have a college degree. I need more money than this. Um, so then I took a job in, in corporate, um, in actually the fashion world, which is interesting. Um, in Duluth here, there's a company called Maurice's. That's where the headquarters are. And it's a women's fashion retailer. And I worked in store operations. Um, I was operation and content specialist. And so I handled internal communications for like a thousand stores, did that for about four years. And then, like I said, a year and a half ago, I left that job and basically I wanted to go out on my own. Um, I was freelance writing a little bit on the side, Um, but you know, now I, I still freelance, right. As a journalist, but then I also have a business, uh, LLC called empower outdoors, um, which is also the name of my podcast, but, um, I work with small businesses basically in the hunting and shooting and outdoor realm, um, everywhere from creating content to copy, um, managing social media accounts, uh, you know, creating websites, working with influencers, blogging, email marketing, just a whole gamut of things. Um, and yeah, I, I love it. It's interesting because a lot of small businesses in the, in the outdoor space don't really have a full marketing team. So that's kind of where my business fits in. 
It's important too, right? Um, <clears throat> I've found a lot of times uh, smaller businesses in the outdoor industry may have uh, oh, very superior quality products and customer service over um, a large company that sells a competing product, but because they don't have the marketing and the branding budget to actually get that out to people, um, a lot of people, you know, that, that company will go and fly under the radar. Right. It's awareness, you know, getting your brand out there. And um, like I said, a lot of companies just don't have the resources to hire like a team full time. So if, if there's, you know, gaps that they can fill in using a service like what, what my company would provide, that's where, you know, it's kind of a win win for both of us, I guess. So, right. Yeah. <clears throat> well, that's a big part of the reason why I wanted to have you on here tonight is because um we've been talking a lot lately about <clears throat> you know like hunter recruitment how we help grow numbers in the future uh you know you can't go it seems like a week now without seeing something come across a facebook post or a news article uh any outdoor publication saying you know there's immediate danger of the decline in hunting licenses and fishing licenses and that you know, I know you're aware of that, and I, everybody that <clears throat> is tuned into that knows that those funds are kind of responsible for all of this being able to continue to happen um, for our generation and generations past us. And I, I think a, a big part of that right now and going forward is the female demographic. So I kind of wanted to pick your brain mm -hmm. tonight from a guy's point of view. Um Obviously, <clears throat> women that hunt on social media, uh, it seems like generally take more abuse um, than guys. And it, it seems like real quick, a lot of times threads turn negative. And I don't know, people are just a little bit more nitpicky uh, about like what they post and how they post. Would you agree with that? or? You know, yeah, I, I kind of do. I think there's a few like a few types of th thought that goes into it. Um, there's people that think, you know, um, that a female a huntress, right, on Instagram is is only hunting for the attention, right? Um, but that doesn't necessarily mean that she is. It's just she's getting attention for it, right? Yeah. Um, because <clears throat> maybe she happens to be pretty or, or she's getting attention for other reasons, right? Um, but that still doesn't mean that she's not hunting and isn't having some type of impact. Um, it's just, I don't know if it's the, some, sometimes I don't know if it's the right impact. Um, and then there's, um, there's, let's see, females out there that are, you know, truly making waves and are, are you know, doing things outside of social media that then translate onto social media. And those are the ones I feel like are having the biggest impact but might not get get as much attention yep, um sure but then i also like like you you mentioned that they kind of get some of the the women get more um you know dragged down or um picked on some on social media <laughs> i know that you know there's girls that wear a lot of makeup and that's like a, a object of discussion and like whether or not they should or shouldn't wear makeup and honestly I don't wear a, a full face of makeup when I hunt, but that doesn't mean that somebody who does doesn't get a deer, you know? Um, right. I've seen it happen. <laughs> but um, I just think that there's a lot of judgment when it comes to that. I also think there's some, I think there's some men out there that have been trying to like make it in the industry somehow for a long time. And then they see women coming in and <laughs> making it in the industry. I, I guess that's a loose term, right? Yeah. Um, and there might be some jealousy there. I, I don't know. But I, I've seen quite a bit of things along those lines, I guess. I would agree with all that. It's very, <clears throat> people want to paint it like it's black and white, right? Like they want to trash a lot of times girls that are, you know, getting on there. Like you're saying, the you know, the fishing thing. We can use that one, right? There's yeah. a lot of girls that have fishing pages that are just <clears throat> in bikinis, uh, they're just selling it with sex, right? And right. then there's uh, girls that really do just love to go out and fishing, 
and post things. Okay, so you got two different things kind of going on there. But then what do you do when you have a girl that, myself, when it's hot in the summertime, I'm pretty typically in my bathing suit. So if you were out fishing with me and taking pictures, uh, that's just typically how it's going to be. And if that's the case for a girl, I mean, what's a young girl? Uh, Hannah. There's a girl that she does all the noodling. Um, Hannah Barron? Yeah, right. Um, I met her, actually, recently. Yeah, so I would never (laughs) uh, jam my hand uh, in a catfish hole and let one of those things bite me. So, you know, she's she's walking the walk even more than what I would. But, I mean, if you go to her page, uh, yeah, you're not going to go more than a couple photos of seeing a picture of her in a bikini. She has a a huge following, but you can't, I don't think it would be fair to sit back and judge her based on that and say, well, she's... So there's just so much gray area and so many variables and every single one of them is case to case. And yeah, I feel like real quick, uh, guys, girls, uh, you know, social media in general, but like I said, it just seems to be amplified on the female side. And I don't know, is, is all of that exposure positive? I mean, you just touched on it. Like is some of, some of it hurting, like, you know, okay, I have a young niece. Like, there's things that I do and don't want her to do when she gets of age and is posting things on social media, right? Mm -hmm. And the outdoors, hunting and fishing has always kind of been an an escape for myself personally. Uh, And I would think it would be for young people going forward to kind of get away from, I don't know, just not necessarily social interaction, but not have to listen to other voices and just kind of get out and relax and, and decompress. And now it's all tied in with social media. So I feel like, especially when she gets, you know, to be 16 years old, it's going to be even more amplified. So I don't know, is all that exposure good? Is it helping bring new people in? I mean, at the end of the day, is it selling more gear and licenses or, or is it, is it hurting? You know, that's actually, I pitched this, that article that you're talking about recently um, to a publication. I'm waiting to hear back, so I'll let you know when that happens. But yeah, that's actually a question that I have too. And I want to put some kind of surveying and a little bit of science behind it. Mm -hmm. Um, So this will be my general, you know, reaction to what you're saying. So first off, you, you mentioned like, you know, the, the ladies were, you know, the Hannah Barons of the world that are catfish you know, noodling or whatever. And, uh, you know, you see her in her swimsuit. If that were me and I was doing that and I had a hot bod like that, honestly, I mean, well, I don't, I don't usually pose in my swimsuit because I live in the tundra. So there's like two days a year when I can <laughs> fish in a swimsuit. But if I was in a swimsuit and caught a fish and got a picture, you know, like I would post that right. just because of like, oh, this is an awesome fish. I'm not going to put on a shirt just so that I can, you know, make sure that it's okay for social media. You know what I mean? Like, I I don't play that game either. But um, the other thing that you asked was, you know, um, is it, is this all this attention actually helping the industry or, you know, getting, when I say industry in this sense, I'm saying, you know, license sales, right? Yep. I don't, I don't think that all of it is helping, but I know from just my own you know, little social media page that I have, I've had other women reach out to me saying I'm inspiring. Does that mean that they're going to go out and buy a hunting license? I don't necessarily know, but if, you know, if I can inspire people or if, if, if other women are inspiring others to, you know, go give it a try or like pick up a bow or, you know, cause for me, bow hunting is what got me more and more into hunting because mm-hmm. I like shooting my bow. Um, so I could see it being a gateway, but I don't think it's like a direct, I don't think it directly affects it, but it could be a funnel. You know what I'm saying? Sure. Kind of a funnel to, to getting people thinking about the options of hunting and, and I think it does have an impact, but, um, I guess it just depends on, you know, what kind of an audience, like if, if it's a bunch of you know, a lot of 
women in the outdoors have a lot of old men following them, to be honest. <laughs> so, like, if it's a bunch of old men, they're probably either not interested in the hunting part or, you know, it really depends on their audience. Yeah. Too. I'm sure. So. Yeah, you can. I'm I'm sure if you could look at all the followers on those accounts when you go to some of them, when they have 100,000 uh, followers yeah. and, and you can clearly see why, right? It's basically like a swimsuit catalog or whatever. But I mean, it's been going on since back when, you know, we were kids that with calendars and now it's just social media is amplified. Now it's for free. <laughs> right. Exactly. But yeah, I, I just, I don't know, you know, I'm from the, from the female point of view, from somebody that's as invested in the outdoor community as you are, I, I'm sure there's a, a level of annoyance uh, to some of it because you can kind of see right through and see what, you know, what they're getting at. But like I said, there's just some gray areas with some people because maybe that's really how they live their life and what they're doing and who's to judge them if they love hunting and fishing. I mean, people that, especially on social media, right, people are pretty quick to judge, but Right. Well, because I think my perspective, because I'm not an old perverted man, I can kind of see <laughs> through some of the, like, the the accounts that are, like, in it for the right reasons. Or, you know, some of them are just, like, pretty girls that are badass hunters. You know, they can't help what they look like either. So it's like, cool, they have a big following. Maybe, maybe it started because they're attractive, but they're also doing awesome things, which does have an impact, I guess. Mm-hmm. And then there's accounts that you can kind of see through, you know, the, the accounts that kind of promote every, every company on the planet, you know, all right. the t-shirt companies, all everything. And I don't think what those, those people don't get is that, you know, they're just really giving away free marketing right. <laughs> content. So, and that's where I would, you know, I would say to them you know, to choose their partnerships, I guess, wisely, but that's what that's my two cents going forward um <clears throat> like i said my concern with it was you know what happens when you're raising a young girl young boy coming up teaching them to hunt and fish and then they go on those social media accounts and obviously we're adults right we we're, we're smart enough to be able to look at the thing and decipher what's what um but young impressionable kids aren't you know so mm -hmm. i don't I, know about I, you but my kid's not gonna have any kind of <laughs> cell phone i'm just kidding but really i'd love to like keep them from it as much as possible but obviously that's probably not a reality <laughs> yeah well it's crazy when we're talking i mean yeah um my wife and i are of the same um mindset it's going to be a long time until our son is on social media like there's been some recent social uh studies done on how social media is impacting the youth of this country and it is it is extremely damaging to young minds for those kids to have to you know basically you if you have a bully at school uh and you're on facebook you now have a bully 24 7 because right. they there's like you turn your phone on and you're getting and the kids don't you know used to if you have had somebody at school you don't like and they picked on you um when you got out of school it was said and done and you'd have some time away from that and now they're saying it's harder and harder for kids to be able to escape that ki young kids to escape that kind of you know right and uh, well, it's also the constant comparison right of others yes you know? yeah exactly and that's why i'm getting why i'm kind of beaten on it is just because the hunting and fishing thing uh you know a lot of times um has always been like a I don't, we've kept a some people i guess not across the board but you know a high social standard where it's it's a family activity right like it's right. a it's a pure clean activity like hunting and fishing getting in touch with nature and uh i don't know then it's you know a bit of entrapment with the the social media aspect of it and, and young adults and at the end of the day i i don't know is it is it helping is it hurting because like i said they just keep saying that you know 
numbers are declining. So is that something that's impacting it negatively or is it something that's helping it from, you know, going down? But I guess you're, you're on that, right. And you're working on, on a piece. on <laughs> that, huh? Trying to. Yeah. Um, honestly, I, I, I don't think it's, I don't think it's hurting because I don't think it's driving people away from like, I don't think it's driving people away from, you know, buying a license. Like it's not negatively affecting the, the reason that it could maybe, you know, leave a bad taste in some people's mouth is the people that aren't meat eaters, but don't hunt. And then they see certain images that are a little bit more, um, I guess in like when people are really in their face, like not kind of disrespectful type of hunting images, I guess. Mm -hmm. Um, the kind that PETA would be like mad about, but, (laughs) um, I think some of those, you know, the way you represent yourself is important because there are people that you meet that maybe could be potential hunters, but haven't been introduced to it. So if they see you doing it right and you're sharing why you do it, then maybe they're interested. And I have had people reach out to me saying, you know, I don't hunt, but I'm interested in this. And like, this is super cool. And there's, you know, there's organizations that help with that too. But I think that if you're kind of representing yourself in like a non family friendly kind of way, and it, it, it could negatively, you know, affect the people that could be potential, you know, recruitments, I guess. Sure. Adults. You just mentioned a word that I want to move on to, and that's organizations. Um, Is there any groups that you're involved with that are, like, female-specific for, like, younger girls that are coming up or not even younger girls? Like, well, right, a lot of talk right now is uh, trying to get later-onset adults in. Like, so let's take a girl that's 28, and she didn't grow up in a family that hunted uh, or fished and she didn't have any boyfriends that were into it, but she does see something on social media and it clicks with her and she's like, God, I'd really like to, to try that. I mean, do you, do you personally have any involvement in, I, I mean, I know there's a couple good ones out there, but like from the female perspective, are there, is there some good support groups and some help for women that do want to get into the, you know, get into the, the outdoors? You know, that's that's where I think social media has done a lot in that sense, um, because that's where I have found actually most of the, the groups and things that and met the people that have put together those types of groups. So, for example, I'm a part of the, the Minnesota Women's Pheasants Forever um, Club. And honestly, I haven't got to attend a meeting yet because it's down a couple hours away, but um, eventually I'll get there. Um, but it is a community of women that, you know, we met mainly on social media and, um, you know, it, it, that kind of local aspect is, is kind of where I would start. Um, there's like, uh, let's see, there's different like sisterhood of the outdoors. There's, um, women, the well-armed women, there's a bunch of different like organizations that you can find. Um, honestly, I found them through social media, but, um, you could start at local, at the local level as well. I know that, um, I, I'm a part of like the Rocky Mountain Elk Foundation, for example, and there's chapters, women's chapters of that, mm-hmm. with the deer, uh, Minnesota deer hunters, like those types of, um, those types of conservation minded groups also are a great place to meet other people that are like-minded or that would even provide some type of mentorship for you. So that's kind of where I would start. You, uh, you're pretty like invested in the outdoor community. And I I don't know, just going back, uh, obviously were were you doing this, um, at a young age, like with, with your family? I mean, I, I'm pretty sure you're, that in just conversations that we had in the past, like you're, do you, you have a dad and a brother that got you doing this uh, long before, like you were, you know, uh, boyfriend, fiance, husband, when you were involved doing it with him? Yeah. So mainly I grew up in the woods. I was kind of like a wild child running around barefoot and naked. So that was like my childhood. 
And hunting was a big part of that because um, we we kind of grew up poor to begin with. We had four kids and my dad was a carpenter and my mom was a stay-at-home mom. And venison was really like the main meat in my house. So um, that, I mean, it was no question that, that my family hunted, <laughs> you know. Mm-hmm. I still prefer venison over beef and I live on a black Angus grass-fed free-range cattle farm. Right but on. I still love... Uh, venison. Me too. Uh, so, <laughs> not yeah, me. So. I don't live on a free range cattle farm, <laughs> but I can tell you that I've been to a couple steakhouses lately. And since I've actually learned how to prepare and cook venison, like from, you know, there's cookbooks now from like renowned wild game chefs. Um, yep. I've had some disappointing meals at some steakhouses. Yes. Yes. Um, yeah. So, Definitely, I prefer venison over beef, too. Um, but uh, my dad, you know, I, I was a daddy's girl, too. So I I took, like, firearm safety whenever the youngest I, that in Minnesota that you can take, it, I think it's 11 or 12. And so I took it and, you know, went hunting one my first year with my dad. And, um, I mean, I, I was freezing. I <laughs> didn't have the right boots. And it was not like the... I wouldn't say it was the best first experience hunting. It was nice to be with my dad, but when you're freezing your butt off and <laughs> you're not seeing any deer, it's hard when you're 11 or 12, you know? Yeah. Um, but I, we actually left the stand and um, it was the last weekend. And so my cousin, Phil, who I actually do a podcast with now, he and I went out like squirrel hunting <laughs> and it was like, that was actually way more fun than deer hunting to me at the time because we were, you know, spot and stock, you know, squirrel hunting and listening for them. And it was like my first like real hunting experience, <laughs> you know? Um, so that was pretty impactful. And, you know, my, my sister, my oldest sister, she's five years older than me. She, she hunted some too at the shack and then my other sister did not, and then no other women in my family hunt. Um, it's kind of like a men's camp. So as I got older, um, I, you know, I hunted a little bit more, but then I kind of stopped for a while, and I, you know, was in sports and theater, and, you know, volleyball and singing and <laughs> all this, all this stuff that you know the young kids you want to get involved in. Know, extracurriculars and then um, I went to college and went to a pretty um, agricultural type school so there's a lot of country folk there which was cool and I got a little bit more into hunting and then I met my um, boyfriend now husband and he bow hunted so I was like hmm, I'm gonna pick up a bow <laughs> because I wanted I don't know I think I wanted to impress him at the time sure. or or I don't know what it was. I just was like, well, I, I've always been that way. Like, well, I'm going to do it. I want to do some things. So I'm going to do it. So <laughs> I bought a bow. It was secondhand and it was like 200 bucks or something. It was a mission. And I learned how to shoot that. And then I went hunting my first year that year. So that was about seven years ago. And I was hooked ever since. Cause I think it was because I just loved shooting my bow. Mm-hmm. And then it was an activity that, you know, my boyfriend and I could do together we didn't sit in the same stand or anything but definitely was like a date night but separate (laughs) right yeah yeah no I I get that I mean it's tough for us now just a pace of life but we love on like you know when the weather's nice to be able to sit out in the yard and my wife and I to shoot our bows you know it's uh yeah it's just an enjoyable thing to do it once you're set up it does you know, you're not, every time you do it, you don't have to pay to do it like you do to go out to dinner or go to a movie or something, right? You can just go out and go out and do it. And, and so you, uh, I mean, you got, you're doing like elk hunts now and stuff. I mean, you're, (laughs) you're not really like, uh, you know, it's, it's not like a passive hobby for you. You're, you're pretty, pretty into it. Uh, is your, I'm assuming your now husband's family, they're, they're all, you know, or hunters and fishermen. Uh, do you have any other females yep. like that you 
do the stuff um, or is it all people that you've met through social media or do you have any cousins or sisters or like you were saying when you were growing up and when you were doing it right you were the you were the yeah. girl right well i mean i my sis my oldest sister she you know she's she hasn't hunted in quite a few years now but she you know she bow hunted i think i think it was like seven years ago when i was in college she got a nice buck that year but she does a little fishing and and she probably would hunt more but she has she's got two like middle school aged kids so it's kind of it hasn't been a priority for her in a while. Mm -hmm. um, my mom doesn't really hunt, but she actually recently took up uh, turkey hunting. So that's kind of a fun activity that, you know, turkey camp, my whole family gets to go to. And then even my little nieces will come along. And, and that's that's a fun, like, family camp. Um, and I don't know. I, I don't know if you turkey hunt a lot, but it's... Yeah. It's pretty fun. Yeah. Um, it's like then, elk hunting, something that is way... <laughs> way smaller and way less tastier than an elk, but it's kind of the same actions. Yeah, kind of. Yep, for sure. Um, yeah, I, I've only gone for a couple of years because we didn't have um, turkey in our area until a few years ago, so we didn't really have a season. Um, but I go a little bit, probably an hour south to hunt turkeys, and and it's pretty, there's quite a few now there, but when I was growing up, there that was unheard of. So, um, yeah, as far as other, other women, I, in my family, there's not a lot. I can't think of a lot of, nope, no, not really. So what's um, it like from your perspective? Like you're generally, uh, the high percentage of people that are involved in the activity that you are very passionate about are men. I mean, I don't know what that percentage is. Uh, I don't know how you would even figure that number out if you would go off like national license sales, like men versus yeah. women, but it's got to be majority men's got to be huge. There's a pretty big discrepancy, but I mean, the, the women, w women have grown as far as the like, fishing licenses for sure. Um, I can't speak as much for hunting. I think it has grown a little bit, mm -hmm. um, but I know more women have taken up fishing for sure. And that's kind of a gateway into hunting, depending on the person. Um, yeah, there's definitely a lot more men um, that hunt around. And most of the people that know me know that I like to hunt. But they, there's always times where even like my dad, I love my dad. But like when he wants to like share something about hunting, sometimes he'll like direct it towards my husband, which is fine. It's probably more, I, I, I don't take that big of, I don't take offense to it because it's probably more him just wanting to like talk to my husband about something, you know, like whatever. But beyond him, like I've had other, you know, men that don't know that I hunt that like will talk directly to Nick about things, my husband. And, and I'll like chime in. They're like, Oh, you, you hunt. I'm like, yeah. And I like try to like inject myself <laughs> into the conversation sure. because people just don't assume, you know, that, I like to be a part of it or that I'm actually, you know, my husband doesn't have social media, you know, but he's, he's a big hunter too. Mm -hmm. He doesn't have Instagram or Facebook or anything. And, and so he, he's a, he spends his whole time, you know, outside, um, and hunting and everything, but he doesn't, since he doesn't have social media, he also doesn't see all the connections that I'm making either <laughs> or like how I'm, like you're, you're saying, oh, you're doing this and this. He's with me when I'm doing that stuff. So he knows, but like, you know, certain articles and things that I'm like writing about and stuff, like he doesn't see all of, all of that and what kind of like impact that's having. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, um, I do have to kind of inject myself into conversations for sure. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean like that, <clears throat> I would assume that would be really aggravating and frustrating for someone the likes of yourself that's that invested in the outdoor community and you've got some fly by nighter guy that's just yakking it up about deer hunting and then kind of like brushes you off because I've just, I've seen it happen before. I, I yeah. know girls that have grown up hunting and they've shot 10 times as many deer as some guy that I'm sitting there randomly having a conversation with at a party 
and she tries to say something and you you can just see his eyes roll back in his head and it's like whoa 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 dude like she shot way more deer than you you should probably listen to what she has to say and uh i don't know it's, it's I it's would almost assume like you have to earn your credibility more. You're right. Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, just going forward, like, I don't know. How do we make it a more inviting? Because, right? Like, it's no secret. A lot of it kind of rests on the shoulders of men's actions as well as females if we're going to grow the female demographic portion of it, right? It's how we treat the females that are coming in or do want to you know try their hand at this um or the ones that are already in it how we treat them on social media like i'm kind of interested in the you know like what is a what is a group of women like you talk about when you guys are together a group of women that love to hunt and fish i'm imagining the conversation and i know you're not going to let it all fly here tonight on the (laughs) on these uh on these airways but there's got to be some general awareness for guys to just be like some pointers to be like ah yeah i could i could see that you know going forward because we keep talking and talking about trying to get people more and more people to do this and the onset adult is seems like the way to really get like someone into it because right they have a car they can drive they have a job they can actually buy gear they can actually go do these things versus kids you're relying on parents to have to do them so females just seems like a no-brainer to me because if guys are already doing these things and they love to do them and they're going to have a girlfriend or a fiance or a wife why not make an attempt to involve them you know if every guy that hunted say there's 50 guys that hunt and, you know, none of their wives do. Well, even if half of them did, that's 25 more license sales. I mean, you could increase numbers relatively quickly, I would think, by bringing in that demographic. Yeah, I I don't, I just, I, I definitely agree. Um, I think that just growing up with not really having female role models. I think that's really important. So if we can get the, you know, adult females in more involved or like encouraged to start hunting, Mm -hmm. it would help with the youth too, because I know plenty of women that didn't start hunting when they were young because, you know, they, I was a daddy's girl. I wanted to be with my dad a lot. Um, but some young women, depending on their personality, want to hang out with mom more, you know, and, you know, aren't interested in, you know, hunting because their mom doesn't do it or there's no other women role models saying like, oh, this is actually cool. This is okay. You know, this is, this is fun and this is why we do it. You know, that kind of thing. So Mm -hmm. I think that that's really important. Um, I know that uh, women that I've met too along the way and their husbands are talking about hunting and this was at a wedding recently, right? Their husbands are talking about hunting and I kind of am chiming in. They're very surprised. Like, well, you go hunting too? And I'm like, yeah. And I'm telling them about it and what I kind of do. And, and then by the end of the conversation, they're like, oh, well, maybe I should go. Like, it's really, sometimes it's that simple of like encouragement, um, maybe having a female friend <laughs> that, that, you know, does it. Um, but as far as for men goes, for men, like to encourage their wives or girlfriends or you know other women in their lives to get hunting it's really it's about patience for one like you can't expect that they know anything I mean you don't want to treat them like they're stupid because they're not no no woman wants to be treated like they're dumb but um there's patience that's involved for sure um and also like I think I'm losing my train of thought here, but also in- including them in, in conversations and like um, trying to teach and, and also not making them feel stupid, especially like if they, they're coming to the shack or, or you're hunting, you know, and all the guys are talking about something. And I've been in that situation where I'd like, I don't want to chime in because it's like, am I infringing on their guy time? Like try to like, include them in the conversation or like, 
you know, don't make them feel dumb if they don't know the answer to something, if they're new to it. And that goes with anyone, if it's a male or female, like you're going to kind of intimidate them if you make them feel dumb. I know guys especially (laughs) do that where they kind of joke around a lot. And sometimes women might take it the wrong way because let's be frank, women take things the wrong way all the time. (laughs) I'm one of them, you know? Um, But I don't know. um, Let's see what else would there be. Yeah, I think, am I correct? Is your husband in the trades? Is he? Yeah, he is. And he he doesn't know how to communicate. (laughs) (laughs) Well, he probably knows how to communicate on a job site. And that's a lot lot different than how you typically would communicate with uh, a lot of people outside of a job site, right? Yes, exactly. So he's an electrician and a farmer. So that, like, we've figured out a way to communicate, but um, <laughs> h- him and his family, they're such, like, hard workers, and they're all, like, trades people. Mm-hmm. And so they, like, they, they don't even need to talk. They just, like, do things, and, like, I can't understand what they're saying. And then I try to help with, like, a project on a weekend or something, and I'm like, you have to tell me exactly what to do, <laughs> where to be, like, where should I stand here? <laughs> like, I, I'm not not capable. I, I did grow up with a you know, a family of carpenters, but that doesn't mean I'm a carpenter either. <laughs> like, right. So um, it, it definitely is something where, you know, you have to, you, you have to teach, you have to be patient. And um, like, especially if, if there's like a group of women, like I've gone on women's trips. So I went on a women's elk trip a couple years ago now, and it's a lot different than, you know, being at the, you know, Minnesota deer camp, for instance, where it's like all men, because we like to drink, but we like to giggle. We like to dance. We like to like, you know, be girls. And that's what's awesome about it because it's like, it's very like empowering to be all women together um, and just not have to worry about, you know, uh, being what judged. men think of you kind of, or being judged. Not that all guys are judgy, but there, it's just the male female thing. Like right. sometimes, you know, you don't know how the opposite sex is going to react to, you know, the hunt that hunting is like their sacred time. And maybe the way you see hunting, like the way you enjoy it when you're not like, you know, when you're in the shack or in the tent or whatever, isn't the same as how they enjoy it, I guess. Um, so I would encourage your wife or your girlfriend to, you know, seek out those groups of women that go on those like women's hunts. Maybe it, it doesn't seem like something they'd be into, but honestly, the, the fishing trip that I went on last weekend, I didn't know any of those girls, really? and we all came out like I didn't. I had no idea. So like, how did you get? In, how did you get involved with it? Social media. It was all from Instagram. There's one girl that I um, had connected with that you know, like we talk kind of like you and I. We've we've talked a bit, um, you know, through social media and connected that way and then she put together the trip and then she invited she opened it up to anybody basically like who wants to come I'm putting together a ladies trip hmm. and she got like 20 girls and it was you know very inexpensive trip so we had people from minnesota wisconsin missouri ohio and illinois really? so yeah none of us had met in person so it was like one of those things where we came out as like really good friends because we all had like the same mindset of being outdoors, you know, outdoors women, conservation minded, liking to fish, drinking beer, like definitely we all clicked. That's super cool. I, I'm wondering, yeah, how different of a, of a like a social gathering it is, uh, you know, when you have 10 guys at a deer camp versus 10 girls at a deer camp, it's uh, gotta be a completely different vibe. It is a different vibe, but it's not like, it's, I mean, neither is better than the other. It's just like, it's just different. And right. I mean, you can have those mixed groups too. You can have women and men at the same deer camp and, sure. you know, you just, you, you have a different vibe even like it's not, you know, the all men's or all women's is just a little bit, you know, a little bit of each, I guess. And, and not all women, like I said, like to, you know, dance and giggle and whatever, but like, it just depends on the group you have. <laughs> I don't know. Well, hunting and fishing is about cutting loose and relaxing. I mean, at the end of the day, I brought this up here in the last couple of weeks. Like, if it's not fun, what do you, what what are you doing it for? Uh, I mean, yeah, it, competitive people, 
you know, like to hunt and fish too and compete against other people. Oh, there's no doubt about that. I've always been competitive and I'm conscious of that, but I'm never going hunting or fishing to, um, make my life less enjoyable. Right. Like right. at the end of the day, it's all about just improving the overall quality of life, uh, and having fun. So yeah, I've been trying to beat that drum here lately. Like somebody, a friend of mine that works in the outdoor space, he, it's not his full-time job, but he does stuff in the outdoor space as well. Some, some marketing, some social media campaigns and things of that nature. And, uh, he had had a business deal that went bad and he had made me aware of it because well, we share a similar space. And, uh, he said, Hey, just a heads up. This happened to me. This could happen to you. I figured I'd brief you on it just so you could be aware. And, uh, when he got done, you know, telling me the whole thing and he said, what do you think about it? And I said, well, I haven't put myself in that exact situation. Uh, and to be quite frank with you, like, it sounds like what you're potentially doing could make you like hunting less. And I would just think Oof. at the end of the day, be conscious if you're doing anything that's making you l love the thing that you love the most less, um, maybe you're not going the right direction. And, right. uh, to me, that's all it's ever been about. Um, this is nothing more than a hobby for myself. Uh, and it's only made me love hunting and fishing more. And I think that just at the foundation of this whole activity, it's about improving overall quality of life. And we kind of need to get back to sharing that and making sure that, you know, we make other people that aren't involved with this conscious of that, that it could improve their life too. And maybe that's the reason why they want to do it. Yeah. Well, and it's like you said, there, there's a lot to enjoy about hunting and a lot of that isn't just, you know, the, the actual aspect of harvesting an animal, you know, and I, a, a lot of it is a part of that, but the other parts that make hunting great are, you know, the being in nature and the, you know, the people and the camaraderie, mm -hmm. I guess. And, and however you enjoy it, the most is what you should be doing and everyone enjoys it a little bit different. And I think that having more females involved in hunting kind of, it does kind of change that a little bit, which is kind of hard for some people that are super traditional about hunting to swallow. Mm -hmm. um, but in the long run, it can only benefit, you know, it could benefit your relationship. It could benefit, you know, hunting as a whole, and then it could also affect the way your children see hunting because it, it puts, say, your wife, you know, and, and you and your kids are hunting. It puts that, like, true, complete family unit around, like, this is what we do. This is what we do as a family. And it's like, I don't know. I think that would be that that would be really cool if more, you know, husbands and wives and their kids hunted together. Not yeah. that you, you can't have a men's trip and a women's trip, you know separately but it, it definitely shows your kids that you know women hunt men hunt we all can hunt you know if we want to that kind of brings so. this whole conversation full circle and that's why i started with the social media stuff and if it could potentially have a negative impact on it because it's kind of a sacred space like with families right. and you know a, fa a good clean real cleansing you know family activity i mean it's <clears throat> a lot of church groups do hunting and fishing activities and outdoor activities and things because it's just a, a good clean environment and uh mm -hmm. I imagine a lot of people want to keep it that way but times change and uh you you either in some circumstances either evolve or die and I, I want to see this thing evolve and go forward so they're just conversations that people are going to have to be open to and have in the future going forward and being open-minded and like you said uh have some patience right right i mean i think that doesn't you know just apply to women but like i think men as well i think there's a lot of men that would get into hunting but it's anybody who's an adult that's trying to start hunting it's sometimes it's hard to know where to start and who 
who's your ally kind of like there's some people out there that are you know so protective of their their land and their space and and like all of that that they're not really open to taking new people out unless you're like super close you know um and then to public land hunt as a new hunter is a little bit intimidating i think um so it's definitely just trying to you know you know when you're in those conservation type groups or those hunting type groups when there's a new person talking to them reaching out to them just you know kind of seeing where they're at i mean you don't have to take everyone under your wing but every once in a while taking a new hunter out isn't a bad idea yeah it's incredibly intimidating if you think about it like uh it'd be no different than if you grew up hunting and fishing and that's all you knew and moved to a big city and took up salsa dancing and just went into like a salsa <laughs> dancing place and like, Hey, I guess I'm going to start doing this. You know, it'd be like, I know for myself personally, I would literally be sweating walking into that place. <laughs> I'd be like, they're going to judge me. I'm going to be terrible. I don't know what I'm doing, but as you get older, it becomes more and more uncomfortable to put yourself in those kind of situations and learn new things and working on this film project this fall kind of reopen my eyes to that like when you get <clears throat> especially in your 30s and your mid 30s and you kind of get into like your life pattern and mm -hmm. you stop breaking that I, I could just see how it'd be so intimidating for you know somebody that's in their 20s or 30s that didn't have exposure to this lifestyle to actually really follow through and uh go do it unless somebody's really pulling on them and tugging them to do it so Right. Definitely. Well, let's wrap this up. Uh, why don't you go ahead and tell people the name of your podcast? Uh, I just listened to your latest one today with uh, um, our mutual friend, Allison. Uh, you guys yeah. were at the what at the ATA show. Did you do that at? Yeah, we did. We recorded it at ATA. I brought like my little mics that actually hook up to my phone for that one because I didn't want to pack all my all my stuff so yeah that one um was actually about conservation groups and kind of how to get involved with them locally um but my podcast is called empower outdoors podcast and it's really um kind of a more of a beginner's guide in some some ways to hunting and fishing and um we share we have guests on the show but we also like a lot of people that share stories of you know hunting and fishing and how they got involved and what they're doing and um a little bit of how to in there as well but a lot of it is to kind of inspire and try to you know get people interested in hunting mm -hmm. um in the outdoors so and do you have a website where you host that or where people can find that as well as maybe some of the stuff that you write or is it just through your social media platforms? Yeah. So, um, my website is alleyupnorth.com and, uh, that is where you can find like my blog posts, some of the work that I've done. And then also my podcast is there too. So you can, it's right on the top navigation. It's empower outdoors on that website. Um, you can also, you know, follow me on on Instagram or Facebook, I have both, um, Alley Up North is my, you know, my Instagram, but then I also have the podcast one, Empower Outdoors. So either one of those, there's, they're also on Facebook as well. So. Well, I, I greatly appreciate you taking the time to sit down tonight and have this conversation with me. And, uh, I say we do it again at, uh, some point here in the future and maybe we can get more into some specific things about uh whatever deer hunting or pick your brain on some of the you have anything any like big hunting trips coming up planned or anything here in the new that you're taking on in the <laughs> in the upcoming year i mean you're gonna be a mother uh coming yeah up that'll the, be something yeah um well actually in march i'm heading to florida to go turkey hunting and hog hunting and then in april i am turkey hunting with my family so i'll okay. be pretty pregnant by then <laughs> but <laughs> it'll be interesting like i said but you're gonna be um, get, keeping after it huh yeah I'm, I'm gonna be yeah definitely i'm gonna be trying so i have uh, never turkey hunted in florida before so that'll be i think they're osceolas i think i'll yeah, have to believe, do a little bit more <clears throat> research I believe you're but right. yeah so that'll be cool um 
and then that hog hunt never hog hunted before i like to do things i've never done before apparently so well right on i wish you the best with uh everything here in the uh short and long-term future and with your pregnancy and i can foresee definitely a uh uh another uh young hunter coming uh in in the future so yeah and i'll have to have you on my podcast as well that would be fun i would absolutely love that perfect well thank you so much and we will talk soon yeah thank you have a good one you too